if you're not crushing it right now as an entrepreneur, you suck. <laughs> you got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? It's really got me to where I am today. So if there's one person in the entire world that I have to thank for all my business hustle, it is Gary Vee and he's here right now. Gary, let's get on stage, baby! Let's go with this. Welcome to Vid Summit, Gary too. Happy to have you back. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Vid Summit. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. Um, so just having a great sense of like the way people have been tweeting about the event and a good understanding of who's in the room, uh, I actually want to do quite a bit of Q&A today. So before I go any further, you guys said you had runners. I just want to get a sense, like where are the runners? And like I might go into it like 10 or 15 minutes in. So Vid Summit crew, be ready for me because I'm about to go into it. And so just raise your hand if you have a question when I open that up. And I, and I wanna go questions because ultimately what I think is super important about when you produce content or when you speak, I think the biggest, actually this is a great starting point. I genuinely believe that the far majority of this room is not achieving what they want to achieve if they're not. So if you're sitting here and you haven't amassed enough audience or revenue or whatever might be running through your mind, the biggest thing that I've seen over the last 12 years that I've deeply been pay, paying attention to creators, and just to give people context here, it was great to see Rob Sandy, uh, the CEO and founder of VidIQ, who was also the CEO and founder of a company called Vidler, which was the platform that I switched my wine show from because I started a wine show on YouTube on February 21st, 2006, less than one year after YouTube came out. 99% of the videos on YouTube when I started were ripped off content from television or these very quick, you know, less than a minute kind of funny clips of like Mentos in a Coke bottle and things of that nature. I sat down and did a 25 minute show. It was mainly kids and tech nerds. I did a 25 minute show on wine and me tasting wine and literally for the first 18 months, barely anybody watched it. And, and so it's interesting for me to like be you know, at this, at this event, knowing there's just so many people that are creating. But the thing that no question to me is a great starting point is I am blown away how many creators spend all their time being selfish mentally. Like 99% of the emails and DMs and conversations I have in conferences like this are predicated on how, start with, how do I, how do I get more subscribers? How do I, get more engagement? How do I get more money from brands? How do I quit my job and do this full time? How do I, how do I, how do I? So I will tell you, without knowing most of you in any shape or form, I still will default into that 95% of the people in this room will not get to where they want to get to because their entire fucking filter on everything they're doing is 100% selfish and the only way to actually amass victory in this game where as amazing it is that we live in a day and age now where you can be a creator and like just live your life and love what you do and make a living, the equal problem is anybody can do it which creates a very fun dichotomy of supply and demand. This is a simple game of supply and demand. Anybody tomorrow can be a slimer or a travel vlogger or a business expert or a fucking entrepreneur, right? Anybody can do that. The problem for everybody here is anybody can do that. And then who's gonna get people's attention? The people that are gonna get people's attention fall into a very basic bucket. Number one, the second biggest vulnerability for the creators in this room and the people at home that will watch this is A, it's I, I, I. B, it's just not the truth. For me, one of the most interesting things that I watch every day in this space is people think that fake it till you make it is still real. There are so many people posing it because they feel like they have to inflate their backstory or what they're capable of or the advice that they're giving to break out, yet that is the exact same reason that they won't break out. To me, 
everybody who's trying to be a life coach or expert or you know, an entrepreneurial expert, like the amount of people that are entrepreneurial experts but have never built an entrepreneurial thing. <laughs> Look, I wish I could be a quarterback of an NFL team, but like I can't and all of you can see that and it's proven. Unfortunately, with entrepreneurship, it's not proven. You can just put it in your Instagram profile and thus you are. The big advantage that everybody here, like myself, that's over 40 has, is we've lived through an economic meltdown. We've lived through everything, you know, we lived through, I mean, there was one in 01 and 07, so we got too quick, like, and then if you're older enough, you've got 92, and like, you know, 79, I mean, that was the worst. Like, Jimmy Carter fucked it up, guys. Um, and so, <laughs> we've lived through it, thus, we anticipate it in a different way that if you're under 32, you can't. Because if you've only lived life professionally in an environment where the economy's been flourishing, you don't realize what happens, which is literally tomorrow morning you can wake up and we can have a Bear Stearns, uh, some sort of event that completely starts the collapse of the economy and all of a sudden the DMs from a detox tea or from Pepsi or Coach stop. And if your entire money is coming from your audience that buys 20, let me tell you what stops when the economy collapses. People don't just wanna buy a $22 t-shirt that has a funny saying on it. Big brands don't wanna pour money because they don't have it into the market. And so what I, where I'm really going with this is a couple things. Context is what drives a lot of success. When you read all your comments for all your content, you get context from your audience and it helps you think about the next place you can go with your storytelling instead of you just being creative and guessing, but you have to put in the work to read the comments. Context in understanding what's happening right now in the global economy, this is all growing, but it's growing during a time of frothy, massive economic growth. So if you're sitting here and your strategy is, I'm gonna get off my job, and I'm gonna get into this, or I'm now making 80K a year doing this, but I'm about to go to a half a million, you have to contextualize the moment we're in. I tell entrepreneurs all the time, and I don't wanna razz here, but I want everybody to wrap their head around it. If you're not crushing it right now as an entrepreneur, you suck. <laughs> this is the easiest era ever to be winning and you have to contextualize that. So, a couple things. You might just start now and you're only three months in, you didn't have time to crush it, but fuck, if you've been trying to do it as an entrepreneur for the last five and a half years and it's not clicking, you need to work for somebody. You wanna know what most people's vulnerability is? I. The reason I always win every time I enter something else, it's what can I do for you? And not the person that has 11 million, just the person that's right next to me because Karma and doing the right thing and kindness and being a fucking human always wins in the end. Always. It does. It does because, because what you don't know is the person next to you may have 48 subscribers but his aunt runs shit. <laughs> and everybody here is jockeying and overthinking and politicking in their head all from a selfish place and all the magic sitting in the doing the right thing, saying hello, being patient, but most of all, the thing that will speed you up in the thing that you want to accomplish, no question, is you've got to become religious about your audience. Like, you have to become religious about your audience. Like, guys, honestly, straight up, if you're sitting in the crowd right now, it's unacceptable for you not to reply to the comments you get on your content. I don't know how, honestly, like, fuck it. Like, I'm just gonna go that literal with it. I don't like to do definitives things because that's just not how life is, but I'm just comfortable going there. It is actually fundamentally grossly negligent and unacceptable for you to be in a place where you do not reply with a thank you or a heart or a meaningful, you read it and you meaningfully wrote something back to every single comment you have right now in whatever limited that is because those seven people are disproportionately the reason you're gonna get 17 and yet you're so worried about getting the next 10 that don't know you, you're giving no fucking love to the seven that decided to watch your horse shit. <laughs> My favorite people here are the ones like, people don't get me yet, I'm too over the top for them, I'm too futuristic, people don't understand me yet. They understand you, they think you suck. 
<laughs> like, like, I love that shit. Like, Gary, I'm coming from a totally different angle. No, you're not, Angel. You actually just suck. <laughs> People want to PR themselves to not address their insecurities. To me, the market is right. If, you, if you're not winning right now, it means you're losing. It means the market doesn't like what you're putting out. Now, you have a question to ask yourself. Are you gonna do something that you think the market's gonna like because you want that short term but it's not your authentic self? Or are you gonna stay the course of what you do and see how it plays out? For me, the second one's clearly amazing. Here's why. My big problem right now with this space is that everybody's trying to make a million dollars a year. I'm trying to get people to understand that if you're making 53,000 a year or 92 or whatever it may be doing something you hate, wouldn't it be awesome if you can make that same exact number just making videos about Star Trek or fucking Supreme Clothes or like making yogurt, right? Like to me, what has really bothered me about this space is I don't think people realize the long tail of this space is the special thing of this whole game. The, to me, the person in here who's making 114,000 a year doesn't like it, super passionate about streetwear and she or he is trying to make their content online, I'm always trying to convince them like, yo, you're making 114, can you look at what you're spending? Can you live a little more humbly so actually you only need 82? Because if you only need 82, you can get faster to getting happy and once you get on the game to making 82 in ads and brand deals, you'll get to 114 in a second because now you're gonna full time energy and it'll open it up. We have a very big problem that we're creating infrastructure costs around ourselves. There's a lot of people here who are like hiring post-production people and a PR person and fucking building out a team and they've got no money coming in to look the part. The market decides, not your self-esteem coach, you know what I mean? The market. If you're so good and you're worth $500 an hour as a designer or an editor, that means people are actively paying you. And if you're not, living in an ivory tower in your own fucking head that you're worth 500 bucks is why 99% of people lose. They buy shit they don't need which then makes them stuck in their business. It's a, it's a fucking evil game. It, like having, the, like you see me talking a lot about move back home, do this stuff. I'm doing it because Moving into your in-law's basement as a man takes a level of humility and confidence that most people don't roll with, but it's gonna be the single reason, how old are you? 38. It's gonna be the single reason, the core foundational reason that you're gonna be happy for the next 70 years. People are literally not willing to take one step backwards to be happy in perpetuity because they're worried their buddies from high school on Facebook are gonna make a snarky comment of them living in their in-law's basement. I fucking, fuck, go ahead. Uh, no, and, and I mean, that's where I'm at. I, I have an MBA, I'm a retired Marine. I'm like, what are people gonna think? And at some point, I was just like, forget it. It just doesn't matter, bro. Yeah. Like, like they're not living your life. So, you're right. So, uh, you always say people, offer you lunch or coffee, you're like, there's no yes. value in that for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, no. I, don't, I don't like when people do it, like, they're, they're, I hate, I hate that people at this point still think they can trick me. <laughs> like, I'm disrespected by their audacity that they're fooling me with their big upfront, like, Gary, I'm gonna do a huge favor, I'm gonna pick you up at the airport and get you cozily to your fucking hotel. I'm like, dick, I'm tired, I don't need to fucking give you advice for 40 minutes after I land of a seven hour flight to go into my hotel room. So I don't, it's not that it's not worth it, it's when I hate when people posture and pose it as they're giving me something, it's far more likely when they just ask authentically. 